right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today we're going to be working with our compost worms. So one of the probably most commented on topics that I've gotten um, throughout some of the more popular videos I've done, the swirl filter and the aqu aquaponics tips and tricks videos, um, everyone talks about the compost worms and adding them to the system, add red wigglers, and they're the, you know, they're going to solve all your problems and that kind of thing. Um, I do agree with, with that to a certain extent, and I'll talk a little bit about that, like, kind of how I feel about the, the uh, worms in the system. Um, I've kind of had to wait until now to add the worms into my aquaponic system here because I have changed out all the rock in the grow beds a few months ago, um, and uh, I also kind of cleaned everything out. Uh, I was kind of waiting until I had everything set. I was wanted to be sure that the rock I was using was going to be my permanent solution here. I also wanted to wait for some kind of you know dead roots and other organic material to kind of build up in the grow bed so that the worms would have uh, plenty to eat when they when I do put them in. Um, the other reason is I was kind of waiting for my worm bin to repopulate and really get going uh, well enough where I could kind of start to take some worms out of there and put them in the aquaponics system. So I'm at that point now. Um, what I'm going to do today is just add a few worms to the first two grow beds here. Every month I'm going to do the same. So I'll just keep uh, taking 25 out every month add to the, the next grow beds next month and I'll just keep doing that until I get up a little bit of a population in there. Um, so what are worms going to do for you at aquaponics? A lot of you guys who have uh, systems already set up, uh, that, you know, you'll, you'll vouch to this. They're, uh, you know, they eat all the waste material. They're going to eat the dead roots. They're going to eat the organic material. They will eat um, some of the uneaten fish food that ends up in the system. Um, I've also heard that they will eat fish waste. Uh, I, I'm not uh, convinced that I have enough research to uh, support that they will eat fish waste, actually fish poop, and other uh, materials like that. Um, but let's just assume that they will, uh, which will also help further clean up the system. So, the, adding worms to the grow bed is, is, a, is a great way to help keep the grow beds clean and further break down materials that's, that, that's in the grow bed, so any organic material that's, that's there. Um, I do not think that worms are a, alter, or a, a solution to replace uh, settlement filters, swirl filters, radio flow filters, and other types of filters in the system. Um, I think that if you get a lot of fish going in your system, uh, you need some type of a settlement tank. Uh, you're still going to have some fine material that's going to get through and into the grow beds. That's where the worms come in and finish that stuff off. Um, and that's just my opinion. I don't think that worms... You know, even if you had 10,000 of worms in here, I just don't think that they're going to break down everything completely. Um, then you end up with too many worm castings and you end up with a, you know, layer of worm castings in the, in the bin. So I don't think that they replace swirl filters, radio flow, radio flow filters and things like that. I think that you should have both. That's just my opinion. Um, so we're going to dig into the worm bin here and get some worms out. Uh, kind of show you, talk a little about my, my little worm bin down here. Uh, a very amateur worm bin, but uh, it's been working pretty well as of late. And uh, we'll just get the worms into the bin and I'll show you the process that uh, we're doing for that. Okay, so you're just kind of looking in the top view of the uh, little worm bin down here. And I've had this worm bin for about a year. Um, it started off kind of shaky, I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, I learned a lot over the last year with these things and now they are just breeding in here and, and taking care of business. They're uh, chewing up all any food scraps we put in here. Uh, and producing some real nice worm castings. Um, so you'll see kind of some random things in here, some stems from the kale plants that I took out of the aquaponics system. Um, those will take some time to break down, but I just threw them in here. Um, a lot of times when I'm down working in the aquaponics system, I'll take little clippings like it. here's some some little suckers off the tomato plant uh, that I'm growing in the aquaponics, and I just cut these off. And I'll throw little scraps and leaves and you know dead leaves I'll pick off, and all that stuff just goes right in here. Um, and then I'll kind of stir it up every once in a while. Uh, an orchid we had, some roots from that that died, and some other random stuff in here. So as I'm digging around, you'll see some, some strange things in here. Uh, we do throw some food scraps in from time to time as well, um, and paper scraps and uh, shredded paper and things like that to kind of keep this going. Um, but what I'm going to do today is just grab some worms out, and uh, we're going to collect those. We've got a little helper here, and our pumpkin carver. Uh, use it as a scoop. So we're just going to take, uh, I don't know, maybe... 20 worms out of here and we'll start putting them in the aquaponics uh, grow beds. Can you reach in and get them? Put them in your fingers. Or put them in the bucket. There you go. All right. Yeah, they're kind of slimy, aren't they? Yeah, but they really work.
Okay, so I'll kind of use this opportunity to talk a little bit about the growth that's been going on since it's been a, a couple weeks since I've done a video. Um, and I'm just going to take a, I've got a little spray bottle here. I'm just going to kind of wet down these rocks so the worms can uh, not, I guess, scrape themselves to death when they're trying to get into the uh, grow beds here. And I'll just throw a little pile of worms in here and see, see what they do. Now, worms hate light. So they are going to, I'm hoping, try to find a place outside of the light as quickly as they can. And so this is uh, grow bed number one, and uh, this is where I've got all the spinach planted. Um, the spinach has been growing very well, but it, uh, I've, I've noticed that I've got some leaves that are drying here. I'm not sure if it's a nutrient deficiency. My pH still isn't uh, all the way down where I want it. I'm at about 7.4. Um, still kind of going down every couple weeks. It drops about a point. It seems to be dropping slower lately, but still still dropping um, Again, the growth has been very very rapid. It's growing at a speed that I like but I, I've, I've noticed a lot of um, a lot of the uh, leaves are getting little spots on them and some of them dried out completely so uh, I'm kind of adjusting here. I've, I'm using the spray bottle to actually miss the uh, miss the plants a little bit um, I've turned down the lights a little bit. I thought maybe I had a little too too high power of light in here. Um, so I'm just trying to make some adjustments there. I'm also stepping up my feeding schedule a little bit because I've noticed my, my nitrates are actually pretty low. So I've got a lot of growth going on right now and I'm using up um, uh, just about all the nitrates in the system. So I'm stepping up my feeding a little bit. And it uh, looks like those worms are, geez, they're almost all gone already. finding their way in there pretty quickly so we'll go ahead and move over to the next one all right so this is girl bed number two and we're gonna do the same thing here kind of what this down this is one of my favorite girl beds um, I've got uh, bell peppers and uh, some banana peppers it looks like in here um, and they're just doing awesome I, I love these bell peppers they do so so well in this system. Get some more worms in here. Yeah, they don't like that light. They start to get out of there quick. I've got six plants in here again. I've got four, see, one, two, three, four um, bell peppers and uh, the two banana peppers. Um, and uh, it's just the, the growth on these bell peppers has just been awesome. So I can't say anything anything bad about uh, the growth in here. Even with the pH a little bit higher, I mean, I had bell peppers growing pretty well at a pH of 8.2, so um, they, they're pretty versatile, uh, but they're growing twice as fast now with the pH down around 7.4, so really, really well. They're flowering like crazy, um, and I have a feeling that these ones are going to start um, producing pretty well for me in the next 30 days. And again, looks like the worms are just about gone. They took right off. I don't know how long that was, maybe a minute, and they are out of there. <laughs> All right, this has uh, been the, kind of the big producer. Um, everything's still kind of getting ramped up, but I've got the three bell, uh, beans here, bush beans, and I've got a new one that I finally got sprouted there that'll be up and producing probably in the next couple weeks. Um, this is the oldest bell pepper plant. It's been in here for... Uh, almost a year maybe 10 months or so uh, and then this one is also an older one but it, it almost died and it just came back it's been looking really good um, this bell pepper plant it just exploded uh, if you looked at the last video um, I'll put a link up to the last video I did but uh, these leaves were almost all not here bell peppers growing here I've got probably about I don't know maybe six more bell peppers started in here there's one at the top and there's just it's flowering everywhere there's bell peppers popping out everywhere so this is going to be a huge producer for me and uh, I'm looking forward to that the beans have been doing really well I just clipped a few off last night uh, I'm waiting for them to kind of do another round of flowering but they've been growing really well um, I'm noticing the leaves will after they age a little while they'll start to get kind of spotty 
And again, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that this is part of the, the pH not being a little bit low enough for them to absorb the iron properly. Um, the system does have plenty of iron in it uh, and magnesium as well. So I haven't tested phosphates or anything like that or phosphorus, but uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly why we're getting the, the marbling of these leaves. So suggestions are welcome. Okay, this is the last one. This is grow bed number four, and these are the dwarf Roma tomatoes. Um, I've got five adult tomato plants in here, uh, and they've been doing very, very well. I've got some flowering starting here. I've got about maybe six or seven flowers started up here, and a couple of smaller ones have started to flower also. Um, they're growing out really well in here, and I'm hoping that the height will stay within my you know two or three feet that I have here. Otherwise, I'll just start clipping them back. I also have a uh, I cut a branch off of one of the larger ones in the back there and I'm trying to clone it in this empty spot here. I just took, cut the branch right off and stuck it into the aquaponics. Um, from my experience with the cloning, it, it looks pretty wilted. I just put this in here yesterday. Uh, usually it takes a few days and it'll look like it's about to die and then all of a sudden it'll start to come back again. So I'm going to keep an eye on this and see if it, uh, it does in fact clone. I've never actually cloned it directly into the aquaponics system. I've usually done it in dirt. So we'll see how, how this works. and I'll keep you updated but this is a this is exciting this one um, I'm, I'm ready to get some tomatoes grown in here so uh, I'm hoping that this works out well all right so the worms are in the grow bed so for all you guys who've been commenting and suggesting and recommending that we get worms in here um, thank you for all the comments and recommendations of course I appreciate it and they're in there now and doing their work so uh, hopefully uh, um, you know they'll help kind of improve the nutrients in the system and break down some of that organic matter and uneaten fish food and anything else that ends up getting settled in there um, so I'm really excited to have those in there uh, I'll probably take you guys along in a few months and we'll just dig through a little bit and see if we can find uh, some worm cocoons or worm eggs um, and baby worms and see how they're doing in there so uh, look for that video out in the future a lot of exciting stuff going on in the aquaponics system uh, we've got fish on the way just waiting for some warmer weather uh, it's been you know, it's negative 15, negative 20 degrees with wind chills today here in Michigan, so um, they're not able to ship the fish to us yet, but uh, we'll be looking for that in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, we've got the tank all set up and ready to go for them, uh, our tilapia, um, as well as a lot of explosive growth going on in the system. I've been so excited, uh, been down here more than I'd like to admit. I come down and check on the system throughout the day three, four times, uh, just kind of see what's going on, and you know, things grow so quickly that you can almost see the growth. It's really cool. Um, if you don't have, you know, if you're looking at indoor aquaponics or outdoor aquaponics or hydroponics or any type of uh, um, indoor gardening, uh, it's so cool in the winter time to be able to come down and just check on stuff and get some fresh beans and uh, fresh spinach and fresh tomatoes and stuff. So we're really looking forward to those uh, those plants uh, growth as well. Another thing I'd like to mention too is that uh, we've really gotten more involved in uh, the social media aspect of things. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys checking out our Facebook. Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, um, I think that's all of them, but I'll put the links in the description for those. Um, it's been a really cool way for you guys to share kind of what you're doing at home with us, which has been really cool to see what everybody's doing. Uh, we've had a lot of people building their own aquaponic systems and questions, and, and, and you know, we really will try to help you guys out as much as possible with anything that we know that we've done here, um, and vice versa. We may have questions for you, so please follow along with those things as well. Um, just check down in the description for links to all those pages. Um, as always, I really do appreciate comments, feedback, uh, positive, uh, constructive, however you want to want to say it. Um, be respectful, but I always appreciate difference of opinion, so please put any comments below. Please hit thumbs up on the video. It really makes a difference. I really appreciate hitting that thumbs up. Um, and subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along. A lot of cool things going up this winter, this spring, and a lot of ideas for this summer. I've got a lot of projects planned, so please uh, follow along and hit subscribe. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching. Have a good one.